TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's opposition highlights its unwavering intention to support the coalition government in the event of war with the Islamic Republic of Iran. The United States pledges that if diplomacy with Iran fails, all options are on the table to thwart the Islamic Republic from ever acquiring nuclear weapons. The Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps unveils a new hypersonic missile which it claims could penetrate any air defenses and strike any target accurately. Despite deep-rooted domestic disagreements on core matters of governance, when faced with challenges and threats, Israeli society unites as one. Speaking at a commemoration ceremony for fallen IDF soldiers of the First Lebanon War of 1982, referred to in Israel as Operation Peace for Galilee, President Yitzhak Herzog emphasized that the scene of thousands of Israeli men marching northward united focused on one common goal. Our sons marched toward Lebanon's bleeding soil, not because of their eagerness for battle, but rather their deep and moral commitment, a commitment of a sovereign state to safeguard the peace of its citizens, to protect its communities against long arms of terror that launched Katusha rockets on the Galilee region for many years with a clear purpose, to harm, to kill, with no discrimination, nor an inch of morality. The Israeli head of state went on to note the regrettable reality in which Israeli citizens from all sectors of the land are forced to contend with periods of threats of hostile aggression. Regrettably and painfully, it was not the only period in which residents of our north felt this way, and they weren't the only ones. Over the years, citizens of Israel and its residents, almost in every location, felt threatened at one period or another. From Jerusalem to central Israel, in Judea and Samaria, who faced repeated terror attacks. In the north, namely, statistical threats, and of course, also in the south, the Gaza periphery, Israel's periphery. Time and again, those threats materialize, as we could see this past month, and of course, not only this past month. Even from the Sinai border, as we witnessed this past weekend, to our sorrow. It is important to know that Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi called Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu earlier today, during which he expressed Cairo's deepest condolences over the incident on the Egyptian border. The Prime Minister thanked the Egyptian President as well as for his commitment to a thorough and joint investigation into the deadly border incident. Moreover, the two leaders expressed their commitment to continue strengthening the peace and security cooperation that is vital to both Jerusalem and Cairo. Returning to President Herzog's address in which he hyphened that Israeli reality in which its security forces are historically forced to confront enemies which deliberately sought to target the civilian rear essentially bolstered Israeli unity to face all challenges and threats together. This Israeli reality, in which the rear and front are often intertwined, exemplifies Israeli resilience, the power and unity that is required today more than ever. It reflects our beautiful image in which mutual responsibility and love for our birthplace are intertwined. Our enemies don't understand this, yet we know full well that upon this principle our hope radiates. We quarrel and debate, shout, but, ultimately, we are sisters and brothers. We are one nation, one state, Jewish and democratic, that operates united in the face of any challenge and against any threat. In line with the President's remarks at a time when Israeli society is deeply divided over the incumbent government's aspiration to effectively overhaul the judiciary, Speaking at the annual conference of the Jerusalem Post Daily in New York, former Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who currently serves as one of Israel's top opposition leaders, 
emphasized that when it relates to threats to the state of Israel, he would grant Premier Netanyahu's government his full support. And as an opposition leader, I want to emphasize this message. We will do whatever it takes to prevent an existential threat to the state of Israel. Despite our differences, should a time come when action is needed, this government will receive full support from the opposition in any determined, appropriate, and responsible action. We know we know such action might come at a great cost. But as always, in these matters, all of Israel's leadership and people will unite. Lieutenant General and Reserve Guns, who until recently served as Jerusalem's top defense official, sees the highly publicized stage to underscore that when it relates to Iran's nuclear ambitions, the world has reached the 11th hour. Today, in an ever-shifting global and Middle Eastern reality, our nation is threatened by the emergence of a nuclear-armed Iran. We must stress that nuclear Iran is first and foremost a global challenge that is endangering both global and regional stability. We have reached the 11th hour and we cannot allow to Iran to obtain nuclear weapons. General Gantz went on to stress the need to globally coordinate a response. Our coordination with the international community, which will face the consequences of Iran's armament, is imperative. Now is the time to do everything possible to reinforce our security cooperation with our most important ally, the United States of America. Meanwhile, in the U.S. Capitol, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, in an address to the 2023 Policy Summit of the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, reiterated Washington's ironclad commitment to Israel's security. The U.S.-Israel relationship is underwritten by the United States' commitment to Israel's security. That commitment is non-negotiable. It is ironclad. Washington's top diplomat went on to acknowledge that there is no danger which Jerusalem faces that is graver than the one posed by the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. But there is no danger that Israel faces that is graver than the one posed by the Iranian regime. That regime routinely threatens to wipe Israel off the map. It continues to provide weapons to terrorists and proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas, who reject Israel's right to exist. It exports its aggression throughout and even beyond the region, including by arming Russian forces with drones that are being used to kill Ukrainian civilians and destroy its infrastructure. And in turn, Russia is providing sophisticated weaponry to Iran. The pattern of hostile behavior underscores a clear imperative that you heard from Michael. Iran cannot and will not be allowed to acquire a nuclear weapon. Secretary Blinken continued by reiterating the Biden administration's continued belief that diplomacy remains its preferred option to deal with Iran's nuclear ambitions. Nevertheless, if diplomacy fails, President Joe Biden is apparently willing to utilize all options to ensure that Iran does not obtain a nuclear weapon. We continue to believe that diplomacy is the best way to verifiably, effectively, and sustainably prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon. In parallel, economic pressure and deterrence reinforce our diplomacy. If Iran rejects the path of diplomacy, then as President Biden has repeatedly made clear, all options are on the table to ensure that Iran does not obtain a nuclear weapon. 
Well, Israeli security officials have repeatedly confirmed to TV7 that the United States remains ironclad in its commitment to ensure the IDF's qualitative edge in the volatile Middle East. The Islamic Republic is evidently making every effort to bolster its own qualitative capabilities. In a special ceremony led by the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps Aerospace Force, its commander unveiled a new ballistic missile with purported hypersonic capabilities. At a distance of 1,400 kilometers, 870 miles, we can accurately hit any target we want, and no anti-missile system can deal with it. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who also attended this unveiling ceremony, boasted in Tehran's domestic military industries, which effectively granted Iran advanced capabilities despite heavy UN-led sanctions on imports and exports of ballistic missile technology, which Tehran managed to systemically evade. This knowledge of missile making and science and defense, as well as missile and military industries, have been indigenous in our country. It is not an imported technology, so threats cannot remove this advanced knowledge and industry. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time.